Hi everyone, it's Avi Martinson here and welcome to this wildlife video. I will cover different approaches to wildlife photography with tips you can use in your own work. Before we begin, remember to turn on the image stabilizer when you are working with a handheld camera and to turn it off when you have your camera on a tripod. Let's get started! Here is a purple gallinule walking among water lilies in Panama. It is a beautiful bird with amazing colors. Many photographers overlook these birds because they are relatively common, which is a big mistake. I shot this image from a boat at a relatively low position. The white nosed coati is one of my favorite animals in Panama. This was positioned in a tree in the rainforest. They sleep up in the trees at night time and at daytime you normally see them at the forest floor. I tried to look for special moments when something happens and I was ready when it was yawning and looking up. The Neotropical River Otter was photographed in a river not so far from my home in Panama. I sat down in the open at the riverside before sunrise and it was an area where I had seen it, the otter before. After about 30 minutes the otter appeared and I shot about 10 images before it was gone. The tree toad slot is a cool animal in the rainforest of Panama. And notice the small depth of field when I'm using a 1200mm lens. The Azuero spider monkey was photographed inside Cerro Oya National Park in Panama. It is an endangered species. I saw them after a two hours walk and all of a sudden there were many of them moving fast about me in the forest. I had to handheld my 600mm lens because they were shifting positions every second. I turned on the image stabilizer on my camera to get sharper images with the handheld camera. On the mainland in Panama we very rarely see the white throated capuchin on the ground. But here in Coiba Island National Park they are more often on the ground. And the reason is because there are no predators like wildcats out on the island. In this situation I was working in aperture priority on my camera. In that mode I decide the ISO and aperture and the camera select the shutter speed. I was on evaluation light metering and I knew if I took the shot with normal exposure the monkey would be overexposed. The reason is because the monkey was in the sun and the background was in dark shade with dark volcanic rock. A quick solution then was to do an underexposure at minus 2 exposure then everything fell in place. And here are some other monkeys also at Coiba Island National Park and they are on the ground feeding on a green iguana they caught. However, on the mainland we normally see the monkeys up in the trees. And this one is feeding on some wildflowers in a tree in Sobrania National Park. The color of the flowers is also painted in the monkey's face. In the rainforest of Sobrania National Park, I saw a group of howler monkeys moving through the dense forest. I handheld my heavy 600mm lens and nailed this male howler monkey in a nice position. On another trip, I encountered this cute young howler monkey climbing around in the forest. The other family members were not far away and I handheld my 600mm lens which is a good solution when things are happening fast and I have to change positions quickly. On a three weeks canal trip that started in the Yukon territory in Canada and ended up at Fort Yukon in Alaska, I encountered this moose. It crossed the river right ahead of the canoe and I shot a few frames as it passed. An amazing and powerful meeting. Sometimes I use a blind to get closer to wildlife. This is how the view looks from inside the tent. And this is a pop-up tent and my wife Sisa Goron is inside it. The pop-up tent is easy and quick to set up. And you can also pack it quickly. The next two images were taken from inside this tent on this trip. 
I photographed the reflection of a grey tigret and I turned the image 180 degrees in Adobe Lightroom to create an abstract image. This grey tigret walked along the lakeshore and I followed it over a 1.6 seconds exposure. It became an interesting abstraction. I had the camera on the tripod but I loosened the ball head so I could freely move the camera as it walked along. Let's take a look at some birds in flight. I took this image from my kayak in the Lake Vansjö, Norway. I panned the mute swan as it flew over the water surface. In the image it appeared as it is two birds, but there is only one. That was an extra bonus in this image. Birds are soul protectors in the spiritual world and my idea was to capture this soul flight in a dreamy image. This was my artistic interpretation of the swan. The cave painters who painted their artworks inside caves for 20 to 30 thousand years ago did not paint the wildlife as they saw them, but they interpreted them in their own artistic way. This pair of red lord parrots flew over the rainforest in the Darien province in Parma one early morning. I panned them and shot a few frames as they passed by at high speed. Autofocus is very helpful in this kind of images and they are in an almost synchronized flight. At nightfall this flock of blue and gold macaws passed through the rainforest in the Darien National Park in Panama. I handheld the camera and panned them as, and this image became an abstraction of their fast flight. And I photographed this gannet in flight on the Atlantic west coast of Norway. I was in a small boat and there were waves, so I had a hard time balancing while at the same time take pictures. I handheld my camera and I had the image stabilizer on and I fired off a few frames when the gannet passed on its way back to the nest in the bird colony at the island Runde. The white-tailed eagle was soaring below me at the island Runde. It was in sunlight and against a background in shadow. I had my camera in evaluation light metering and to avoid an overexposed eagle I underexposed the image at minus 2 exposure. The evaluating light metering would have exposed too much on the shady background and then the eagle would have been burned out and it would have been too bright. A quick underexposure solved that problem. The black-bellied whistling ducks is one of the few ducks that sit in trees. I photographed them in a tree at the riverside in Panama and I froze one of them in flight as it was coming in for landing. A little bit of action sometimes adds to the composition. A brown booby is landing on a cliff in Coiba Island National Park in Panama. I was in a boat and I handheld my 600mm lens and I switched the sta image stabilizer on and also used autofocus. The snail kite in Panama is an interesting bird. This juvenile snail kite took off from a branch at the lakeside and I was very close with my handheld 600mm lens. The autofocus was on and so was the image stabilizer. I was in a boat and with all the motion in the boat and the moving birds then it's a good reason to use the autofocus in continuous focus mode. And you learn about that in week one. The sapphire throated hummingbird is a fast moving bird. I set up the camera with three flash units beside a flower where I saw the bird earlier. I used a remote release and I could press the, the release button as soon as the bird entered the flower. I also used wireless release for all three flash units. The wireless sender is mounted on the camera and the three flashes serves as slave flashes in slave mode. The spotted dolphin jumped up beside the boat on the Pacific coast of Panama. I caught him just before he went under again. I handheld my lens and the image stabilizer and autofocus were on. Sometimes you have to be quick, but the more you practice, the quicker you can operate the camera. 
These two mullets were swimming in golden hour light one autumn evening on the Lake Vansjö in Norway. I saw the beautiful lines in the water and their repetitive forms. This juvenile green iguana was positioned amongst the beautiful circular leaves and I included them in the composition to strengthen the image. This swimming iguana was on a dangerous journey across Chagres River in Panama. At this point the river was about 150 meters wide and the river has a lot of crocs. I had my shot with the eye sharp and the iguana made it to the other side and I handheld the lens. The next four images are taken by the support of my flash and with a flash beamer mounted on it as you can see in this picture. A juvenile purple gallinule is at the riverside of Rio Chagres in Panama. The flash brings out the tones in the feathers and reinforces the reflection too. The flash with the flash beamer light up the great egret in Rio Chagres in Panama. A flock of cattle egrets are positioned in a tree in Rio Chagres in Panama. I set the flash on rear curtain sink and the flash goes off at the end of the exposure. The resplendent quetzal is considered the most beautiful bird in the world and I photographed it in the highlands of Panama. The flash with the beamer made the colors pop out on this amazing bird. I used my camera on a tripod here and I turned off the Im image stabilizer. In this situation I turned the light meter to manual mode. First I set the ISO, then the aperture and at last I spot metered the turtle in the brightest spot and adjusted the shutter speed so I got the exposure in zero. In this contrast situation you must always spot meter on the brightest spots. Before I entered the mangrove forest in a boat on the Pacific coast of Panama, I spot metered the light on a sunlit riverbank and the camera was in manual mode. I pre-visualized that a bird or an animal would appear in a sunlight spot in the mangrove forest. Then I had my light metering fixed and I could concentrate on the composition when this beautiful great egret appeared. The sunlight at the riverbank and the sunlight at the egret was the same. Against the dark background the contrast is awesome for this composition. This is an Atlantic Puffin at the island Runde in Norway. I used a low aperture number and that gave me little depth of field and the bird stands out against the background in beautiful evening light. And here is an idyllic picture of an Aguti mother and young in Parama. This white throated capuchin mother and young are in the rainforest of Sobrania National Park in Panama. I used a flash with a beamer to fill in some extra light. And this is a roe deer family in summertime in Norway. A beautiful situation and it also shows the environment they live in. A young muskox guarded by a powerful adult in Doverfjell National Park in Norway. It is wise to keep your distance to these animals. This common moorhen, mother and young are photographed in Panama. The mother just gave the young an insect to feed on. This is a small and cute situation in the everyday life of these birds. This is a huge American crocodile in Panama. I like the curvy position and that it is showing the teeth before entering the water. And here is an American crocodile underwater and notice the small fish that surrounds it. I was photographing the great egret here in Panama when all of a sudden a came and came out of the water with a fish in its jaws. Chance favors to prepare mine. I photographed this hedgehog in street light at night time at the island Runde in Norway. I turned the ISO up to 25,600 and that enabled me to have fast enough shutter speed to hand hold the camera. Sometimes I use my wide angle lens to include wildlife in the landscapes. This is a beautiful sunrise in Koiba Island National Park in Panama 
and in the foreground are black vultures. I was alone and I spent one day observing these two musk oxen in Dovrefjell National Park in Norway. I kept my distance in the open and they knew where I was all the time. After a while they fell asleep and it was clearly that they did not see my presence as a threat. Here is another image of musk oxen in the open and vast landscape in Dovrefjell National Park in Norway. I like the light on the mountain in the background and the tree animals in their environment. I saw these two vultures on a beautiful evening in Panama. I like the profile and the repetitive forms. And here are two Atlantic puffins in the rugged landscape at the island Runde in Norway. I sat down and waited and after a while the two landed not so far away from my position. A little blue heron is walking in front of a flock of black-bellied whistling ducks in Panama. I like the position that it has and that there are two species in the image and the reflection. And thank you for being with me in this video and I'll see you soon in the next.